Good afternoon. Welcome to today's Metropolitan Government's Board of Zoning Appeals meeting, now in session for a specially set meeting of November the 10th of 2016. My name is John Michael. I'll be presenting the cases of the board for their review today. Uh, for members of our public and for the board as well, if you wouldn't mind, please silence your phones and other devices for the duration of the meeting so the board's proceedings won't be interrupted. Uh, we're here today at the Madison Police Precinct. We're very appreciative of the staff here for helping us get set up and the officers who accommodated us in our effort to have this meeting since we were uh, double booked at our normal meeting spot. For today's public hearings, the board will review correspondence submitted both in support of and opposition to each of the cases. The board also reviews correspondence and recommendations from other government agencies in preparation for the hearings. In today's hearings, staff will present the site plans, maps, photographs, and other documents that comprise the case record. At the conclusion of the staff presentation, the appellant will present his or her case to the board. After the appellant's presentation, the board will hear from those wishing to speak in support of that individual case. If the appeal has opposition, the board would then hear from those who wish to speak in opposition. After the opposition, the appellant will have a period for rebuttal. Under board rules, the appellant has 10 minutes for presentation if there's no opposition present. For contested cases, BZA rules allow 15 minutes for each side to present testimony. As a reminder, uh, for those who wish to speak in opposition or support, that 15 minutes is shared, so please divide up your time accordingly among yourselves. For appellants who wish to save some time for rebuttal testimony, it'll be incumbent upon you to do so out of that originally allotted 15 minutes. At the conclusion of each hearing, the board will deliberate and then vote on each case. The board's vested with the power to act on these cases under the provisions of the Metro Zoning Code, section 17.40.180. All section numbers that we refer to today come from the Metropolitan Zoning Code, which applies to the entire jurisdiction of the Metropolitan Government. I'll introduce the entire Zoning Code and make it part of today's record. The Metro Code requires a record of these proceedings. Because BZA meetings are recorded for Metro Channel 3, it is imperative that anyone wishing to address the board please come to the microphone, identify yourself by name and address, and then make the desired presentation. The Metro Code requires four members of our seven-member board to establish quorum. The Code also requires at least four affirmative votes in order to grant an appeal. In the event that only four members are present, which will be the case today, if an appeal fails to receive four affirmative votes, that appeal will be re-advertised for the next available public hearing. In this case, that means next Thursday, November the 17th. Applications that fail to receive four affirmative votes within 30 days of today's public hearing shall be deemed denied by operation of law. Pursuant to board rules, an aggrieved party may appeal board decisions to the Chancery Court within 60 days of the hearing date. Additionally, the aggrieved party may file a motion for rehearing within 60 days of the original hearing date, pursuant to the terms of the BZA rules and regulations. After that time elapses, the board's decision becomes final, and no further action can be taken. If your appeal is granted, you are required to obtain the permit for which you applied. A permit must be obtained within two years for a board approval to remain valid. It should also be noted that if any false or misleading testimony is presented to the board, any board approval could be revoked at a later date by means of a show cause hearing before the BZA. Mr. Chairman, I'd submit that the cases have all been filed in the proper order, all appellants have been notified by certified mail, and all legal notice requirements have been fulfilled. The preliminary announcements for today's meeting are as follows. Our next meeting will be next Thursday at our regular meeting location. So that's November the 17th of 2016, 1 p.m. at the Sunny West Conference Room on the, camp on the Fulton campus in downtown Nashville. For today's cases, there are three deferrals, case number 145, case number 150, and case number 158, all of which were noticed for today's hearings <coughs> but are being deferred to later dates. Additionally, case number 156 has been withdrawn by the appellant. At the outset of these meetings, we'd like to take a moment to recognize the elected officials who are present with us and give them the opportunity to come forward and address the board on any of the cases that they're interested in. I know Council Member Russ Pulley from Green Hills is with us today, as well as Council Member Jeremy Elrod. Pleasure to have both of you here. Um, Councilman Pulley, would you wish to come forward and address the board at this time? Yes, sir, I do. Thank you. Please come on. Chairman Ewing, members of the board, and esteemed members of Metro from the various departments, thank you for this opportunity to speak before you. 
Uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of two of your cases. The first one I'll talk about is uh, number 2016-162, found at the top of page six on your agenda. Uh, I'm gonna leave it to the appellant to provide you all the details of, of this, uh, but um, it's my position on this that the application of the contextual setback yields what I believe to be an unintended consequence here. Uh, base zoning allows uh, for what the appellant wants. He wants to put two homes there, and the contextual line drawn actually goes right through the middle of the current existing residence. Uh, I, it's my belief that a variance from this uh, which is requested by the uh, applicant uh, would yield a better product for the neighborhood. I also might note that uh, I've received no opposition from anybody in the neighborhood to this variance at this time, uh, and I just want to note for the record my support of the appellant's request to vary from the contextual setbacks. Uh, the second uh, matter I'm here to, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, I can move on, and uh, I, uh, the second one I would like to refer to is uh, case number 2016-163 on uh, page six of your agenda. Uh, and this, uh, this, this particular uh, development already has two existing residences built in adjacent, built in a lot adjacent to the, uh, the lot on which two more is requested to be built. All of these will be covered by the same HOA. Uh, the appellant seeking a variance which will enable the units to be built and fit symmetrically uh, with the other two, which yields, in my opinion, a much better product for the neighborhood. Uh, this fits the neighborhood symmetry a lot better than what it would look like if you applied the contextual setbacks to it uh, uh, currently. And there's been no opposition from any of the neighbors in that area to this request for a variance. And for the reasons I just stated, I'm in full support of the uh, applicant's uh, desire to vary from the contextual setbacks. Any questions? Councilman Pulley, thank you for being here and yes, sir. explaining your position on both of these cases. It's particularly helpful for us that you have talked to the people involved and that there is no opposition to as well. Yes, sir, that is the case. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, and for the benefit of Councilman Pulley as well, uh, just for the clarity of the record, case 163 did have one uh, email of opposition that came in probably after we last communicated with Councilman Pulley on the matter. Um, so that is in your file and just didn't want that to go and state it on the record. Okay, this is one, this is this kind of two sentence email that we have right here. I think so, yes. Is it 162 though? From someone's initial CAS is that the one I think so okay okay can, what's can we ask if the opposition is here okay John Michael are we ready for the rest Uh, Councilmember Elrod, did you wish to come speak to the board also? Thank you, and my apologies. I've got a cold. I'm losing my voice a little. Jeremy Elrod, uh, District Council Member for District 26, 53 Center 3 Trousdale Drive. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members, for allowing me to speak. I'll try to be uh, brief. I'm speaking on case 160 um, before you. It's uh, <clears throat> asking for a variance for a sign for the Nashville Zoo. Um, the Nashville Zoo has grown a lot. Uh, they just completed an entryway that has won a uh, national award, is up for international awards. They're opening um, three or four new exhibits next year. They usually, um, uh, Rick uh, with, a zoo, with a zoo director was just telling me most zoos open an exhibit once every three years. They're opening four next year. Um, the zoo is growing a lot, it has become um, probably a, uh, a destination for not only Davidson County, but for the region and a sign that is before you that is asking for the variance, I think will be befitting the zoo and the attraction of its kind. Um, and also along the Knowles Road corridor, I think will um, add a lot to the character of the area and bring a lot of that um, together. Um, so I just ask for your, uh, your support and I support the, uh, um, the case. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Councilman Elrod. And as you said, yes, the zoo, if you have not been to the zoo lately, you must go. It's, I remember when it was in Jolton, of course, and of course the old Grassmere there, but 
it is now just one of our top attractions in the region and um, I appreciate uh, you working with them to um, submit such an interesting kind of sign that's kind of bold and iconic, yep. uh, worthy for this great attraction, yep. so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The BZA operates with a consent agenda. One board member reviews the cases for uh, or reviews each of the cases prior to the hearing and identifies cases where the appellants have essentially met the criteria for their requested action. The reviewing board member determines that testimony in the case would not alter the material facts, then that case is recommended to the board for its approval. We'll enter into the record those cases that have been so recommended today, and if anyone is here in opposition to any of the named cases, please raise your hand so that we can remove the case from consent agenda and hear it in its regular order. The first case is case number 2016-143 for the property at 326 Alice Avenue in Council District number 30, a case seeking variances from side and front setback requirements. Is there anyone here in opposition to case number 143? Seeing none, the second case is case number 2016-155 for property at 620 Church Street down at the edge of Brentwood in Council District number 4 seeking a variance from parking requirements. Is there anyone here in opposition to case number 155? Seeing none, the third case is case number 2016-160, the aforementioned zoo case, where the National Zoo at 3777 Nolensville Pikes requesting a variance with regard to their new signage. Is there anyone here in opposition to nice signs at your local zoo? Seeing none. Those are the three cases that have been recommended for consent agenda, Mr. Chairman, uh, would solicit a vote at this time. Sounds like someone with a young child. Um, we have the following cases on consent agenda. Um, I would like to move them to the consent agenda. It's case number 143, 155, and 160. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, motion's been properly made and seconded. Any more discussion of the consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? John Michael? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And as we have uh, stated in the past, we'll remind everyone since we're out of our normal range, please do use your microphones uh, so that we can capture everything for Metro 3. The first case to be presented to the board is case number 2016-103, an appeal so, of a short John term. John Michael, did you dismiss the other people? Probably. Ladies and gentlemen, if your case was on consent, then you have uh, received the approval from the Board of Zoning Appeals. You're free to leave. You're free to stay, if you wish, as well. Um, for those who are here on any cases that were withdrawn or deferred, they will not be heard today. And again, you two are free to stay if you wish, but are also free to go. Thank you for being here today. All right, Mr. Chairman, case number 2016-103, involved in the property at 910 Due West Avenue. John, as shown John Michael, can, can, before we get involved in this particular case, can you give us a brief history of short-term rentals in Nashville, why they're regulated, how they're regulated, what's our role, and how that has changed? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Short-term rental properties are regulated in, Metropol in Metro Nashville pursuant to uh, the Metropolitan Code of Laws at 6.28.030, which is a business regulation section of the Metro Code. Short-term rental properties have become more popular here in Nashville and really across the country, popularized through websites like Airbnb, VRBO, and several others as well. When the regulation came into place, it was both for the preservation of uh, quality of life in neighborhoods and also for registration, tax collection, and a number of other more nuts and bolts government purposes. The regulation that we have in place here in Metro Nashville has been in place for about a year and a half, not quite two years now, has been amended a number of times already, and there are other pieces of legislation pending even now that could potentially further amend that ordinance. Uh, one of the provisions of, uh, one of the provisions of the ordinance is that any appeals with regard to a denial of a permit, revocation of a permit, or any other such action, such appeals would come to the Board of Zoning Appeals, which is why they come to you at this august body and have since the inception of this regulation. Um, one of the types of cases that we see much more of lately is the scenario where someone operates through Airbnb or one of the other leading websites 
without first getting the legally required permit. Uh, and then when they try to come into compliance by coming in to get the permit, of course they're denied because the law says thou shalt not operate an Airbnb or a short-term rental property without previously obtaining the legally required permit. Those folks are allowed to appeal the revocate or the uh, denial to this board, and so you have a number of those cases on your agenda today. One of the most recent amendments to uh, MCL 6.28.030 came from BL 2016-257, and the Metro Council put in place a law that allowed our BZA a certain measure of flexibility that it had not enjoyed in the past. For those who had operated without a permit previously, they were required to sit idle for one year and not obtain their permit. Um, then after one year, if there had been no further violations or problems, they would be eligible for the permit. Now, the law has been changed to read that no more than one year will be the duration of such a penalty. And the board has a list of criteria printed out on bill number 257 that I've given to each of you in your packets so that you can review what those criteria are in determining whether or not some lesser amount of uh, punishment is what's appropriate in these cases. We do occasionally get questions about the law's provision for a $50 per day fine for continuing violations. That is a provision that is made available to court for its uh, administration. Our board does not have a fining authority under state or local law, so that's not part of what you do. Just determine the duration of a wait if you find them guilty. Thank you, John Michael. I know the original um, short-term rental legislation was drafted by my council person, Berkeley Allen, and this new updated amendment is Berkeley and Councilman Colby Sledge's bill. This gives us a little bit more flexibility to handle these cases. As you mentioned in the past, if we found a violation, the only uh, redress that this board had was either to um, impose a year or nothing. And so this gives us kind of some flexibility of in between. So board members, of course, you've gotten the copy of the new legislation that lists the kind of mitigating factors, I guess, if you will, that we are to consider. So every case is different. And those of you who are here for these kind of cases, what I would like to hear from you when you're here is what happened the first time and um, why do you think a, less than a year should be imposed based on that? So we are here to um, as the board to hear each individual case and not just come down with a blanket year uh, because we have more flexibility. Any other comments from the board members? Yeah, the, the, John, the only thing that you had said was that if, if, you, uh, if you don't have a permit it had, or if you violate the rules, you, it sits idle and there's nothing in the rule that would keep you from renting your house on a monthly basis uh, if you, you know, had a rental house, you could rent it to a tenant for a month or more, but short term is less than that, I believe. And so yeah. you can't do it short term, but you certainly aren't prohibited from renting your property, just not on a short term basis. So Th that's a very valuable clarification, Mr. Taylor, and it's exactly right. Short term is defined in the ordinance as a duration of stay of 30 days or less. So you rent that thing out for 31 days or more. The traditional, I've got a one year tenant, absolutely no problem. There's not even a permit required for that. Thank you for that important clarification. So those who are watching at home, A, that we have ruled upon in the past, you can come and appeal our ruling, technically. I don't know how that's worded, John Michael. But let's say if in the last three months we found you guilty of violating the Airbnb, the short-term rental law, and we imposed a year uh, penalty on you, you can now come back to us and explain why you shouldn't be penalized for a year because of this new legislation, is that correct, John Michael? Okay, so um, I know there are a few cases about this nature on the agenda today, and so we will be hearing those. And once again, we appreciate the council members who have been in front of us many, many times, including Councilman O'Connell, uh, Sledge, Allen, Shulman, and uh, others about this particular legislation. So. Uh, we hope that this gives us a little bit more leeway for these cases. And I know, as you mentioned, John Michael, this is probably not going to be the only change to the statute. Proceed, please. With that, Mr. Chairman, on to case 103, shown here on the aerial shot. This is a case that's been before the board in the past, 910 Due, Avenue, uh, Due West Avenue. Um, the appellant, Jenny Noe, is the 
appellant who is seeking uh, in, via item A, which is the mechanism by which these cases come to the board, an overturn of the zoning administrator, zoning staff's denial of the STRP permit based upon its prior operation uh, before having the permit. So the aerial shows you the residence, a simple street level photo. Obviously staff's presentation is pretty limited on the PowerPoint for STR cases. However, your packet has the nuts and bolts of the documents that staff relied upon in making its determination. And thus the appellant, uh, I should ask, is there any opposition present for case number 103? Seeing none, Jenny, you'll have 10 minutes to make your desired Can presentation. I, I think. Let me turn this. Oh, perfect. Hi, how are you? Um, my name is Jenny Noe. Um, I'm here for 910 Due West Avenue. Um, I was before you before in August, as most of you may remember. Um, should I just kind of backtrack from the beginning? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so in June, my husband and I um, fixed up a space in our home to do Airbnb. Um, we got our business license, tax ID, um, insurance, everything that we thought that we needed. We contacted Airbnb and they said, well, Airbnb is worldwide. Um, it varies from place to place. So, you know, you have to kind of go by your area. Um, we did what we thought we were supposed to do. We got it going, we had about eight guests, and then I was at a physical therapy and I met a woman there and she said, oh, I'm getting my Airbnb going. She said, I just have to have the, co the codes guy come in. And I was like, well, what do you mean the codes guy? Um, she said, the codes have to, have to come in and check your smoke alarms and such, and that was something we had not done. Um, and we're honest people, we wanted to do things the right way, so immediately, um, the next day, we were at Codes, told them the situation. We were denied immediately um, and you, said that we you. could do the long term. Um, I called Airbnb, explained the situation. They're very helpful, canceled all of our bookings. We have not listed at all since that time. Um, and we've just been waiting. As I said, we I came before you in August and explained our, the situation. Um, and you guys suggested the reappeal because of some of the jurisdiction changes and stuff. And do you, do so. you live in the home? Is it? Yes. So you're, is, this is an owner occupied home? Correct. Right. So when you ran into that person at physical therapy, that was really the first time you even knew there was any yes. sort of regulation. I had asked, um, I had friends who knew people that were doing Airbnb and I would always ask, well, what do we need? What do and they said, well, I heard this and I heard this and this and, th and, and then I would call Airbnb or I would, you know, and, and then they would say, it was like, well, yeah, you're supposed to do that. No, you're, you know, so a lot of the stuff was hearsay and half of it wasn't true and half of it was, but I had never heard anything about codes. As I said, I had never met anyone specifically doing Airbnb. I had heard through the grapevine, through other people that people were doing it and they were making money from it. And um, as I had said before, I do not have a, a con conventional job because of an illness that I have. And I thought, well, this would be a really good opportunity to maybe make some extra income and, you know. So, so. Miss No, you said you had eight appointments Correct. booked when you found out that you didn't have a permit you were supposed no, to. No, the eight, excuse me, the eight that we had. In the future? Pe no, oh, eight okay. people that had stayed previously. Oh, that stayed there, okay. Yes. Did you have any in the future that you canceled? Yes. How many? We were probably booked up, I would say off and on for a month and a half. So is that Not five, regularly. is that 10? I mean, how many did you have I don't cancel? remember, I think it was maybe anywhere from six to ten because my understanding is airbnb charges you fifty dollars if you have to cancel is that true they didn't charge us anything i called and i was very i, I had explained to them our situation mm -hmm. and they said you know they okay. were very they said a lot of people just continue to do it anyways and we said well we don't want to do that we want to do things the right way and you know we were told we could do the long-term rental but we didn't want to do the long-term rental just because we didn't really want someone staying in the space for that long. It was just kind of an occasional thing for us, so. Any other questions? I do have one. Um, how did you learn that you could come back here and reappeal to us? Um, that was what you guys told me to do. I saw yeah. you in August. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in August we assumed that the council would be passing this legislation, we just didn't know when, so we just said come back in a few months and mm -hmm. hopefully it will be done. I want to ask you, have you gotten all your permits now? By code or the we inspector? haven't done anything. Everything has just been kind of on hold until, because we didn't know what we could do and what we couldn't do, and everything has just been completely frozen until 
we got the go ahead so we know you know that we could do things you know so you've basically not been operating for two months here right um since the big very first probably the first week in july we july okay yeah so yeah. even longer okay correct do you have anything else to add for us no i think that's it we just would really like to get things going again and as i said we want to do things on the up and up and okay. you know thank you yep yeah, thank you okay we're going to close the public hearing yeah this is okay. one, this is one of those that I, I mean I you know even one of those cases that, that we said uh when we talked to the council and they'd asked for our feedback that we said no this this is the kind of case that we really need to have some leeway on it's an owner occupied home uh, it's not an investment property um it, it there's clear testimony and consistent testimony that it was something that they didn't know about um, there is every and honest attempt to correct it once uh, it happened and to not violate the law once they knew they were in violation of not having a permit and so uh, you know I think we heard a case at the last meeting and um, one of our council uh, and one of our uh, members uh, had suggested that in this case, you know, uh, three months from the time that uh, you were notified not to uh, do that might be more appropriate, and that would have been been in July. So I, I'm perfectly happy with time served and and to issue this permit to you know have it immediately issued mm -hmm. uh, as soon as she complies with all of the uh, criteria for the permit. I, I agree. agree. Uh, this is why we asked the council for more authority to kind of look into this um, and have some more leeway and flexibility. The person immediately stopped uh, renting and took down the any future listings when this happened. They didn't know about it, and it and there's no opposition either. Obviously, Airbnb is contentious in short-term rentals in some areas that. You know, people, even if you're applying for one, they object. And so I think that says a lot about this case. So, and John, help us on this one because on, on item A appeal, we, and because we have a lot coming up and we need to make sure the motions are right, um, you, you overturn the zoning administrator, but what is, is that based, it's not based on an error, it's based on the extenuated circumstances of the specific case through which the rules allow us to. Uh, I mean, the, the permit wasn't denied in error. We're going to ask our lawyer. Yeah, about if we could have thing. just some some generic language for sure how and we would do that, that would be great. And Mr. Vice Chairman, I think you hit it on the head. Typically, our item A cases are predicated on whether or not the zoning staff or zoning administrator erred in the action or inaction that was taken. Um, and because that's not exactly the scenario here, it, it is an inexact fit under item A cases, although appropriately styled that way. Perhaps the best bet is to just acknowledge that because of the unique provisions of section 6.28 out of the Metro Code, um, the motion is merely, maybe that's it. Um, let me backtrack a couple of steps there. Because the punishment associated with this violation, which I think the board seems to indicate they think was properly determined, um, the punishment associated at the time of the finding was one year. It's merely a matter of the law changed. Now there is a different range of punishments available, and the board takes its action merely to establish a different uh, duration of that punishment. I think it's important for us to say the duration. So for you, if it's two months or three months, that needs to be stated in any sort of motion. Uh, then, then I will move that we. Um, so, are we? We are we're not upholding the zoning administrator. We are upholding the zoning administrator, but amending the punishment. I think that's right. All right. I will move that we uphold the zoning administrator uh, ruling that this property was uh, rented prior to applying for the permit, and based on the evidence presented and the criteria given to us by the Metro Council that we would amend the punishment to three months beginning uh, the day that uh, the applicant said uh, that she stopped renting, which we will assume is middle of July. Uh, she said sometime in July, I'll assume, we're just gonna say July 15th, uh, so which makes her eligible for a permit uh, as of October 15th, which is passed, and so she's eligible today. That's my motion. Is that an acceptable motion? I want to add uh, amendments to that to 
include the confirmation and receipt of all applicable laws and codes and inspections. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and John Michael, you mentioned the $50 fine earlier. Is, do they have to pay that again here or have they already paid it? There's no fine paid to codes department, to BZA or anyone else. That's only for cases that go to uh, environmental court here in okay. Metro. Very good. So is that acceptable second after? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, we have a motion that's been properly made and seconded. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Actually, I oh. didn't second. I amended his to add yeah, the other, so it still needs a second. Or okay, well, will yeah, you second? I second it. Okay. All right. Okay, motion's been properly made and seconded. Discussion, anyone? Seeing none, all those uh, in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes four to nothing. So please contact the codes department, get your permit, and then you could relist. The other thing about our Airbnb law, which is really interesting and a little bit different maybe in some other ju jurisdictions, the violation is not renting, it's posting. So you can't post on Airbnb until you have your permit. So we all need to know that. For the benefit of Ms. Noe and all of our other applicants or appellants today who are on here on short-term rental cases, um, a reminder, uh, Metropolitan Government offices are closed for Veterans Day tomorrow. Don't come see us tomorrow. We're not there. Uh, come see us Monday. Yep. We'll be eager to help you. But you can go to the city's annual Veterans Day parade downtown. Mr. Chairman, the next case before the board today is another short-term rental case, case number 2016-113. 2016-113, John Lott, the appellant, and Robert Lott, owner of the property at 209 Craighead, have an item A appeal, the zoning staff's denial of the short-term permit, again, due to prior operation without the legal required permit. The property shown here on the zoning map gives you an idea of uh, the layout of the neighborhood, and the aerial shows you the property in question. Uh, Mr. Lott, is there any opposition present for today's case? Is there any Mr. Lott present for today's case? Seeing none, Mr. Chairman, we are unable to proceed on 113. So let's defer to the very next meeting. Okay. Um, you know, I know we're here. I don't know if he went to Sunny West or just thought it was the next meeting. I Mr. Chairman, a humble suggestion from staff, given that our next meeting is so near and the notice would be a challenge in that regard, mm -hmm. perhaps we could push it out to our next meeting, which would okay. be December the 1st of 2016, a mere, what, three weeks out, I guess. Do we need to re-advertise our notice? Or we at least want to make sure we have time to properly notify the appellant himself okay. by a certified mail once again, which okay. the earliest that would go out would be Monday, of course. Sure, especially because of the holiday and all that. Yes. Sure. So sure. we'll move that to what date then? December 1st. December 1st. Very good. Okay, so we're deferring that till December 1st. Maybe solicit a board vote on that, just for clarity on the record. Okay. I'll so if, if nobody shows that it, it is automatically deferred, not denied? Yeah, and I think we should just give them the benefit of the doubt, and there's nobody in opposition here, so. Okay, so we are moving that case 113 is deferred to our December 1st meeting. Okay, motion's been made properly. Seconded, any discussion on deferring 113? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, deferring the 113 signify by saying aye. Aye, opposed, passes four to nothing. Mr. Chairman, the next uh, case to hear is again, a short-term rental case, case number 2016-153. dash Jonathan Coleman, the appellant and owner of the property located at 4518 Graycroft Avenue in the 8th Council District, has his item A appeal challenging the decision to deny a short-term rental permit based upon prior operation before obtaining the permit. Zoning map gives you an idea for the neighborhood there, not too far from the way that most of you came in today for a BZA meeting. Ariel shows you the neighborhood and the specific house in question. Um, is there any opposition present for case number 2016-153? Mr. Coleman, are you present? Please come forward and address the board. You'll have 10 minutes to do so to present your desired testimony with regard to your request um, for the appeal. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Coleman. John Michael, can you help him with the microphone? That does it. I must confess, I. Uh, 
I'm a musician and play for a lot of people. That this is quite nerve-wracking, so please bear with me. Um, thank you for your time today. Uh, our house is at 4518 Graycroft Avenue in, uh, in Maplewood. My wife and I lived there uh, for uh, from about 2005. Our, our family grew, so we moved, uh, bought a bigger home. Uh, in that process, we uh, found a way to keep it as a rental home. And we long-term rented it for three years, and then uh, we got notice from our previous tenant that he'd be leaving in the at the end of August of this year. So um, at the time, I was on the road, and uh, we were gone for most of the summer. Uh, so we explored it beginning in mid-August, and so in the process, we furnished the house uh, starting September 1st. So I began thinking ahead, and I, I put the, the, the house on Airbnb. Uh, to my surprise, we had reservations immediately, and I accepted several of them. And um, at that time, I had no idea that a permit was required. And uh, I was out of town uh, in September, and the first opportunity I had was the day that I presented myself when we came home from a West Coast swing. And um, the gentleman asked me uh, uh, if we had rented before to Airbnb, uh, to short-term rent. When you say the gentleman, who do you mean? The, the codes. Gentleman. Okay. And I said, yes, we had the previous two weekends. And he said, I'm going to deny your permit. So, so that's the old self-incrimination. Right? Well, you know, um, <laughs> that was the first time I was aware that there was an ordinance that there was a penalty for renting, and I was that I was aware that you had to have a permit at all to rent. So there was a lot of media coverage in early September, and that's when I became aware that a permit was required. So that's why you came down to the Coates office. Well, yes, and that was my that was the first time I was in town, um, and I did bring a schedule, but it'll bore you. Based, we were on the West Coast from about August first, came home for two three days. And went right back out. We so were you're gone. on the road a lot. In yes, other sir. words, okay. Um, in the summer. So uh, in closing, uh, I have to say that I'm here today because of my own ignorance. Um, if I'd have known operating without a permit, see the two incidences that I was denied for had occurred in the previous two weeks before I was there to present myself. So had I known, I mean, I would have just said no that they, you know, I would have taken it off the site and gone and got the permit, but I had no, no idea about this, this uh, penalty. So um, I would have uh, not accepted the request to stay at our home before applying, and I hope that you will keep that in mind. Um, I brought some neighbors with me that, uh, or a neighbor. Uh, raise your hand if you're the neighbor, okay. Neighbors, okay. So both of you are fine with him having an air, a short-term rental permit? Okay, very good. Um, and if you don't have any questions, that's all I have. And I forgive me for being nervous. This uh, you're fine. Did you did you rent it after after you knew after you went to Coach and Coach said, "Oh, you can't do this anymore." Did you stop renting the? So we had things on the books, and I've honored what was on the books. Um, and there are some still outstanding. The thing was uh, is very popular, but I have uh, I've blocked about four days after the codes. Uh, you know, I was I couldn't I was in touch with my council person, uh, Miss Van Reese, and and you know just just touching base with her is about what to do. And so I made the decision about four days after codes denied me, and I blocked the you know six months out except for what's on the books. And we have a, a letter from um, Councilman Van Reese uh, who's in support of you having this. Okay. Okay. So tell us again when you were when you stopped or you were required to stop renting this place? What date was that? So I think the day that I went in was September 13th. Okay. That was on a, uh, and I'm not sure, you might, if, if you have that, that would be helpful. I looked this morning for it, but I believe it was September 13th. Chairman, we've got September 19 as the application date, and we typically assume that that's a first visit. In those okay, well, we'll, we'll use that for our, our purposes, the 19th of September. Okay. So, like you said, you're a musician, you're on the road a lot, and you just, the first time you knew about it was when you saw something on TV. Yes. Well, one of my bandmates said, hey, how's it going with your Airbnb? And, and he said, there's some, something on the news about it. And so I, I just started looking into it. And when I, when I looked at all of the information on the website, you know, I gathered all my things. And quite frankly, I didn't read to the bottom of the page, which is where it has the penalty. 
Any questions? You said you had some other bookings. Yes, sir. Have you canceled those out, or what's? I, I haven't canceled them. Um, the ones that I have are are in the near term, and I I just didn't feel I still don't feel right about canceling them, you know, and putting people out. Maybe you need to clarify. I mean, I appreciate your honesty. Yes, sir. And you brought it up, so that's why I'm asking. Right. So. Absolutely. Well, I mean, and, you know, when the guy asked me, or when the codes gentleman asked me, I, you know, I'm going to be upright about, or sure. tell the truth about what's going on. So what, what what's your next scheduled uh, occupancy? There's what? someone in there now. And I think it's, at that time when I blocked it, there's there was bookings through mid-December. Okay. So I think we need to get a clarification here so we know what's his next one after this okay, one. So sure. Well, I think as we hear these cases because of the new legislation, one of the things that I would ask the staff to do before they put one of these on our agenda as an appeal is if someone doesn't have a permit, that they should not have any future bookings. So that. I don't know if we could even do that as far as a condition, since it's not in the legislation. John Michael, what's your take on that? We err heavily on the side of allowing people to appeal via item A on any action of the department. And we always have, and we think that we always should. Um, the doors of appeal should always be kicked open wide at the first opportunity. That said, um, the implied kind of sentiment, I guess, of that request or question is on the nose, and that's any operation including advertising without the permit is in fact a violation of law subject to prosecution in the court system. Uh, this is merely about grant the permit or no, how much punishment in terms of duration of wait, if yes. Um, I'll stop there as my role is to inform the board, not prosecute the case. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions of the applicant? When's the next scheduled occupancy that you uh, there's someone there now and there's someone there next weekend that's on the books. Um, the, the, I don't want to speak out of turn about, I had, I had a little bit of guidance that as long as I blocked from, you know, blocked all the calendar out, that it, as long as I was on appeal, honoring what was on the books would be okay. I'm sure that didn't come from the codes department then. No, sir. Okay. That was, any other questions? After what you have to have that coming and next now? weekend. Yeah. Well, now next week through about the middle of December. Okay. Any other questions? Do you have anything else to add? No, sir. Okay. I'm glad to be here and thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. We're going to close the public hearing. So board members, um, this is a unique case too. Once again, someone has operated, then they found out and came here, and a, but as we heard from the applicant, there's someone as we speak in there and uh, booking for the weekend. So the question is, there's no question with their in violation. What I would urge the board to do is to look at these cases individually and to craft a punishment, if the board so deems that is gonna be less than a year, based on the facts that are in front of us. And since there are some facts in front of us that imply still operating, I think the board should take that into consideration. Yeah, I, I agree. And you know, the, uh, I mean, the, the things in, in the applicant's favor are uh, one, what, what I've certainly perceived to be uh, uh, frank and thorough honesty about his situation. Um, uh, also, um, an immediate attempt to correct the situation uh, in, in a way he felt like was uh, the best way, uh, not ideal necessarily to me in terms of not canceling. You know, it, it, it wasn't as ideal and clear cut as the first case, which uh, the applicant canceled everything and said, hey, I'm not doing this right. Um, but I also understand and appreciate someone's um, entering into a you know a, a relationship or a contract with somebody and and if you know, if I were going to another city this weekend and somebody 
let me know today they you know were canceling on me because they didn't have the right permit oh, i'd be upset they didn't have the right permit but it would put me in a bad situation and and i understand that um, having it several months out is a little bit of a problem so I, you know my rule of thumb i've been thinking through is you know those folks that uh that really kind of acted pretty much immediately and tried hard, you know, that three months and and whether the three months is is an addition, you know, you know where it starts, I think is the question. And you know, do you do you say, you know, uh, you know, if you keep what you have on the books and you know March one is is for new rentals, when, when would you allow new rentals, uh, given that there has been you know income generated after after the fact or or is that enough to say you know we we don't like this but I, mean, I, I really do appreciate the action and the honesty and i don't think that to me less than a year is appropriate i just don't know exactly what that is i agree with that i'm just thinking uh that's why i asked the question what else is booked on there so maybe we need to call him back up and see well if we i mean well the testimony was that, i mean there was at least this weekend and next weekend and then there's some some of right. some in some capacity through the first part of december it's it's interesting had it not been for probably these current bookings that are on the books as we speak we probably would have just said two or three months and then come back so that's why i said we should consider these rentals right now and how do we handle that as you said some people believe that they made a contract or a bond with somebody and they signed up that and to cancel at the last minute would be not be good even though they don't have the permit and now they know they're operating without a permit so how do you handle that? It's a balancing test of yes we can come down on the applicant but there's some nice visitor to music city that wants to stay in this house I can ask a question I know that the $50 fine mentioned in the um, amendment is not something we can um, enforce, I guess. But because he's testified today that he is renting without a permit, is, I guess, environmental court, he's going to get a notice from them to pay these $50 fines? Potentially. You know, I guess the only other, you know, again, trying to, to start to develop uh, a list of, of things that really go in your favor, uh, a letter from your council member stating that they would, uh, you know, that, that she would prefer this person to have this permit and, uh, and neighbors, neighbors, neighbors really and matter. neighbors coming out in support. Um, which is really rare uh, in, in a short-term rental situation, most neighbors are opposed, uh, really does make this unique. And so, and, and, and not to try not to waste our time, everybody else's, but th this is new to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've only had this ability to lessen a, 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 an offense. Uh, this is a second meeting, so we're, we're still struggling with this too. But. And I also value transparency and honesty. You know, I don't think there's anything that he has tried to hide from us today or even from the codes department when he went down there. I agree with all of that. And I think there's the fact he's renting without the permit. There is a separate fine. It's not regulated by us, but there is a separate fine that punishes him for that. I hate to use that word, but um, so I don't feel like if he goes to court. I, I guess. I mean, I don't. Potentially. Okay, potentially. Remember, I'm not an attorney, so I don't know how all that works. But I just feel like there is something out there that covers the fact that he's operating without the permit. So perhaps we don't. We can still stick with our three yeah, months. Ruling or, today, and it's up to somebody else if they want to <laughs> bring this back. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm. You know the. It's a little bit different to me. I mean, I, I'm, 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 right now, pretty comfortable saying, you know, it, you, you uh, the applicant has said I'm going to keep what I have on the books on the books, and uh, I'm not. I mean, I'll, I'm okay. I'm mean, that's that's fine, but I also think that you shouldn't have your 
you know, the, the, the first applicant truly did have a three month penalty. And so, um, I mean, I'm, I'm really more inclined to say, uh, you know, if you keep what you have on, on the books, you, you know, you're on the honor system. If you take more, you take more. If you don't, you don't. But that's up to the environmental court and your neighbors and, and, and your sense of, of honesty and integrity. But that you're eligible for a permit, say, you know, February 1 or March 1, which would be four or five months. And, and that. Um, I'd like to call him back up and ask him if he knows. Well, well he, he said September 19th. But, but we're was, not. Are we basing our punishment on his future bookings or are we basing on what happened? Um, I think we're, no, that would be based on the fact that on September 19th, according to code, uh, he knew that he was right. in violation. And again, with, I'm not saying he, according to the code, he did the wrong thing, according to, you know, to him. And, and, and I think it's a perfectly fair interpretation that somebody might say, gosh, well, I'll just, I'll keep what I have and then I'll go do the right thing. I don't know that it was entirely personally financially driven. I think in part certainly it benefited him, but I don't think that that was the sole motivation and certainly in what his testimony. So to me, I think that uh, the fact that that happened says, you know, you're different than the first type of case. It's not a clear cut. And for her, it was three. And for him, I'm saying five and, and saying, you know, maybe uh, either February 1 or March 1. March 1 would be five months, February 1 would be a little less. So, which means that, you know, that you've got rentals, you know, uh, in November, you got rentals through a little bit of December. That was the testimony. You probably had rentals oh, in September. Oh, so October. your four months allows him to keep what's on the books. Yeah, I would, I would say, I would say keep on the books and, and, and be eligible for the permit March I mean, 1 and then under honor system, don't rent anything that's not already there. That's let's you, talk about, you're going where I'm trying to go to. well, uh, before we, else, before we go there, I want to hear from has, John Michael who deals with this every day. The challenge with the idea of uh, acknowledging and I don't want to use the word allowing, but allowing, overlooking, whatever, the presently booked, non permitted, the, the short see days, no evil ruling um, is to tacitly allow that which is pointedly illegal. It would be knowingly and intentionally allowing non permitted use of a short term property for short term purposes. One of the reasons there is. Uh, this regulation is for health safety reasons. The fire marshal checks to make sure the fire alarms are where they want them to be, the right number of them, the right placement of them. That's not happened yet, which means the metropolitan government in a situation like this now has pointed knowledge that there is no permit, that the appropriate checks have not been done, and yet if we pursued a motion with that specific condition, uh, would tacitly allow it to carry forward in that manner. Forgive me for being lawyerly about it, but lawyers tend to be lawyerly. We're on the hook, man. Something goes sideways at a property like that. That's real bad because we have acknowledged that we know that they've not done it. Well, and I guess the, the, to me the motion would be that you're eligible March 1 because you rented after you said you didn't. And you know, the testimony was that it, it may have potential future rentals, which you know the agencies watching that are responsible for that certainly can act on. Um, but it's not... Uh, I, I, I acknowledge that I understood the thought process, but I certainly wasn't trying to affirm someone's right to rent without a permit. If, if, if that was implied, or even if I said it, I didn't mean it, <laughs> especially and, after and what you my, just said. <laughs> one of the important takeaways from what you kind of delineated there is we now understand there have been rentals that took place after the September 19 denial of the permit that there are also bookings. So one category, that which has happened before today, or as we're sitting here, as it so happens, uh, may potentially trigger action. Any actions going forward is something obviously that neither staff nor the board would condone as an overtly illegal practice. And, and that's I why that's I have a question about that, John Michael, as part of a motion and kind of a lesser punishment of a year, can we make a condition of that, that all future rentals that are booked without this permit must be canceled during this period? The board has the legal authority under Title 17 to place conditions on their approval. And because that, that condition would basically be, you must follow the law, that's an easy condition to place. I think that that kind of solves Metro's issue about liability. And, you know, to me, I know if you signed up for short-term rental online and you, then you don't have a permit and then somebody from Texas gets their 
thing canceled and they wanted to come here for whatever, uh, that's a problem, but we have to follow this law. And for us to say, well, we're gonna look the other way for a couple months and then the punishment starts, I'm not sure if that's the spirit of what the council passed. Well, and that, that may be the, the, the best, and again, uh, and, and this is a new, and, and part of this is to figure it out. And so what I'm hearing is that if, um, that the person acted uh, pretty immediately to, to try to rectify, uh, has council support, has neighbor support, um, and it sounds like that had they, and had a belief which you know you hear on TV and everything else, yeah, you know, they're out on appeal. Everything is fine on appeal. You just keep living your life when you're on appeal, and you feel like, well, I can see why, if you think you're on appeal, that that you might do what you did. That said, with the advice of our our our, uh, well, our what, crew, I'm just saying that, that what what I would throw out to you is, you know, you said three months for the last person. That now you're kind of moving toward five. You know, you could well, no, make well, no, a motion. I mean, what, well, no, what I was saying, what I'm thinking is that if, if three months or three to four, or whatever is applicable, then then that is contingent upon that. No, you don't rent. You after today, w once you've acknowledged this, that you really need to cancel your future bookings and not. Does it start today or September 19th? Well, you can't cancel. No, I'm no, I'm saying the three months may start September 19th, but the rentals, future rentals, you know, you've got to get rid of your future rentals till we say you can have a permit right. as a condition. I, I do I do agree with that. Can we open up the case again do and have him come back? Do we, do we want to hear from the applicant again? Do you, Mr. King? I do. Okay. Applicant, please come forward again. Okay. We're just trying to keep all our noses clean. It's so very we'll, interesting and I appreciate it very much. It's, it's, and I have an idea that maybe to get you around the problem, if you, you know pretty accurately when your last booking is from now, the latest? The, from today, the last, uh, probably uh, early December. So after that, they're all new, correct? You've blocked them off. Is that the last That's right, future yes. booking yes, that sir. you have? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you get a inspection permit pretty quick? I don't know why you could not. I mean, especially well, so we, we have this thing, thing called the It City, and it's kind of hard to get people out on short notice. John Michael, what's the kind of lag time for these kind of inspections? It's not slow on this, actually, because we're not talking about having to do a complicated site plan review or anything. It's merely coming in to see the zoning examiner to get the process started, then booking with the fire marshals group to get one of their folks out to check it. The whole thing could be wrapped up in a couple of days in almost every instance. Really? Wow. Fire. That's what I was going okay. to Okay. So, yeah. We like to keep putting the it in it city, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions of the Can applicant? You get the application made pretty quickly. Absolutely. Start that procedure. Monday, because we're closed yeah, close tomorrow. tomorrow. Veterans. Start time. Monday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Do we have anything else to ask the applicant? The i more concerned about than anything. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions, of the applicant? Okay. Close the public hearing again and discussion. Okay, now you can go back to your whatever you were. Oh, well, you know, I mean, the, the, I, I think that the, the dilemma is that if, if, you know, the, if you said, well, you got your, you know, if you could get your permit next week, your future bookings are good. Um, but that's really less than a, that kind of three month time frame that we talked about. So that's. But every case is different. And I know yeah. the first case we gave three months, which just happened to be time served. I mean, yeah. the point of this new legislation was to look at each individual case on its own and determine based on the facts of that case, what a reasonable 
punishment is that's less than a year if we go that route and then make that ruling based on what has happened. And we talked about things like honesty, support of neighbors, support of the council person, you know, things like that. Well, my point was start the proceeding right now and get the permits done. If he does it, then say, okay, for a period of one month or whatever, you're not to rent the thing out. Okay. Which would mean cancellations of at least a no, couple of books. I'm talking no. about after. He said he felt like he didn't have any bookings after de December. But if he has a permit, he has a permit. We can't say once you have the permit, you can't book. Right, John Michael? Right. I guess the board's ability to punish after issuance of the permit is invalid in that regard. The board, of course, can basically set the date that they would be eligible for the permit, and that is kind of enacting the punishment, if that's what I understand the question to be. Well, I think what we were saying is give him the permit now so these future bookings are good, and then kind of meet some sort of punishment out after that, which I don't think that's the spirit of. Well, that, that makes enforcement virtually impossible, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm open to whatever you all think is, is fair. You know, the, the, the time served is, on the first one is, is an interesting piece because it was convenient. And right, think, and we just kind that, of, it could, that could have easily been, I to think, me, th a one month would have been well, sufficient I th I th for I that case. Had, I think had she come, had, had we had this rule in August, we would have just told her she was fine. And she Immediately, come. yeah. I mean, <laughs> we happened to say three months because it was convenient that that's still outside the boundaries of what she would have had to, to, to restart. But to me, that first case, I would have just given her a month and then here's your permit. So it, it I mean, it sounds so if like- you're basing three months based on that, yeah. like I said, these cases should be on their own. Get it, and, 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 and I get it, and, and, and I'm just trying to, at some point we have enough where they lump into similar things. You sure, can say, hey, right. This is an A, B, C, D, This or e, is a whatever. very unique case in a way. I, you know, we and, might and get some more cases. Right. So I guess, it, so I mean, I'm, a, a motion would be, would be uh, fine, and, and I think that, that, again, knowing that we, Council okay, neighbors, immediate, all the stuff we already said before. Um, I mean, somebody can say, hey, if th they're good to go tomorrow as long as they have a permit, and then it's up to them to get a permit before, but they're not allowed to rent without one and right. by law. Yeah, so I, think, I think that's what we say. Whatever motion that we have and when, whatever the start date is, they're not allowed to rent at all to anyone, even if it's existing, until they have that permit and inspection and everything signed off on. So, had somebody make a motion? Did you all have a brainstorm out there? The zoning administrator rightly noted that the board does have the ability, as we said, to pin a condition, and one such condition could potentially be issuance of the permit, and that at a fixed date, um, beginning a period of what I guess we would refer to as suspension of the permit. So, it would, even though it's a one-year permit, for example, if and I'm absolutely making up timelines. A 10-day suspension of the permit would take effect on X date. So from day one to day 10, there would be no ability to advertise or list or certainly rent the property in that scenario. Uh, again, there are certain challenges from an enforcement perspective, but uh, he's right that the board does have the authority to cobble together that kind of a condition if you wish. So what our zoning administrator is saying is basically we could give someone the permit in December and then suspend that permit in January and then give it back to them in February. We, we could do all that today. Oh, Lord. I just, in, gen <laughs> in general, I don't like that. I don't, do I. I don't like that because the only reason that we'd be doing it is to accommodate some bookings that were made and kept, shall I say, in violation of the law. So I just don't think we should, and outside of some extreme situation, somebody's 50th something coming here and this was like a unique venue, which, you know, but I would rather us not get into those kind of things. Well, I, I, as, and, uh, council and neighbors and, uh, and the situation and honesty mean a lot, so I'm, I'm good with whatever you all think. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate his honesty and integrity, so I want to honor that. I do too as well. And so for that reason, um, I would move that we um, 
uphold the zoning, that we basically rule that this particular case, 153, that the zoning administrator's denial of the permit, we are changing from um, their denial of a year to that this person will be eligible for a permit on December 1st and the conditions are they have to have all the inspections and the permits and they have to cancel any future bookings that are between now and December 1st. Is there a second? Okay, motion's been made and properly seconded. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes four to nothing. This, since this was such a, I don't want to say complicated, please talk to the staff about what our ruling is and what you are to do, but I will summarize it. That basically, you will be eligible for a permit on December 1st, so long as you cancel any future bookings that aren't in there now, and you have all the proper permits from the city and the inspections. So you will be eligible to get your permit on December 1st if you cancel future bookings that are between now and December 1st and that you go through the process. There's, there's one booking that comes to mind, a family coming for Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that, um, how many bookings are there on Airbnb? There's just a lot and you know, I know. 2,300 permitted, Mr. Chairman. 2,300, so um, I'm sure that this family will hopefully find another place to celebrate, but you know, what we want to do is enforce the law. We want you to have this long term. And so um, in the old days, it would have been just, you have to come back to us for a year. So we are giving flexibility, and I think that considering we are just 10 minutes ago talking about February or March, I think this is best for you. Or can we change the motion to Edward or sooner? I mean, if he get the permits, like we said. Or, I mean, okay, if you can get everything done. Okay, I, I will change my motion. When are they coming in? This, no, but when's the next one? When's the Thanksgiving people? Uh, so that'd be the, so that'd be what, 15th, 15th? 15th of, no, no, no. no, no, no. So what I'm going to do is I will change my, let's say if it's the 25th, if you're able to get your inspections and all that by the 25th. Well, simply say. So we could have 20th and serve. But what date is it? Uh, Thanksgiving's on Thursday. <laughs> okay, um, my motion is that it's December 1st. What does the board, motion's been made and seconded. We haven't voted yet, so what are we thinking? He has somebody coming in around Thanksgiving. I'm thinking is as soon as he can get his permit and he's back home. Well, I... <sighs> I would rather put as earliest. That would be early, as soon as he, if he can get it next week. What are the other board members think? I feel like a lot of people have come here and have been very honest and they were assessed that one year penalty and hopefully they know to come back to us and try again. But I do feel like your motion was very fair and I'm willing to continue to second it. Well, I think um, kind of the will of the board is to kind of stick with my December 1st motion, which basically says cancel all bookings between now and December 1st, come back with everything and you can get your permit on December 1st. So any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes four to nothing. Please talk to them Thank afterwards. You. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, did you want to take a brief break for the board in order sure. to Sure, we'll take that? a brief break. And during that brief break, please talk to John Michael.